Hello and welcome to today's lesson all about OET writing and I'm going to give you a top tip about selecting and organising information. I'd love to go so far as to say that this is the best tip you're going to get because I think it's really one of the best things that you can learn today to help you select and organise information. So this is going to be useful for everyone doing their OET. We're going to be using an example from the medicine um, side of things, but as I say, it's going to be useful for everyone. And the best thing about it is that this tip is really simple. For those of you who don't know me, hello, my name's Sona. I'm your online OET tutor with Bose Learning, and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET, which means I've done extra training to make sure that my lessons are there to help you get ready for your OET. And as I say, this tip has worked with so many of my own students. That's why I know it's such a good tip. Because I also know that so many of my students get such a headache, and this might be you as well, when trying to select and organise information from the case notes. And this is what happens. They get the task, they look at the task, and then they look at the case notes. And they get a headache, and suddenly what they do is they transcribe the case notes and I don't know if this is you you can tell me you just go through it and you look at the case notes and you transcribe it you write it into longer sentences and for example I get given letters like this to correct that say Mr Jones is married with three children he lives close to his parents and helps them with shopping he drinks occasionally and does not smoke he first had this problem on this date when such and such happened and he did this at first and then he tried something else and finally he presented at my surgery with this problem and the grammar's lovely the sentences are fine but the poor candidate had a headache trying to do this and importantly the poor reader has a headache reading it and trying to decipher what on earth you are asking them to do and why. So I want you to stop. Please, please don't do that. Don't give yourself a headache. Don't give the reader a headache. Instead, take a look at the task. In this case, you're a doctor and Mr Barry Jones is a patient of yours. This is from Medicine Sample 3. And then have a look at the actual task itself. What does it say? So first of all, pay attention to the fact that he's a regular patient of yours. You're going to write a letter to the occupational therapist explaining the situation, requesting an assessment of his workplace, and that's it. So. Take a look at the notes. Don't just start at the beginning and transcribe them, but instead, and this is the best thing to remember, plan as though you are doing a verbal handover. So imagine what you would say to a colleague. If this was the patient and you were handing him over to your colleague, what would you say to them? You would probably say, can you help my patient with an occupational therapy assessment? He's 46. He works as a forklift truck driver. He had an accident. This is what happened. And he was off work for so many weeks. I've already given him this treatment and it's been successful or it's not been successful. But now he wants to return to work and needs your help. I think it's a good idea, or I don't think he's ready yet, but maybe you can take a look for me. Can you help? That's the kind of thing you would say. So plan like that and then just formalise it because, of course, the letter is a professional letter, so you need to make it more formal. So make notes and then transform them. So you would say something like this. I'm writing to refer my patient, Mr Barry Jones, 46, for a workplace assessment. He is a warehouse operator and following a back injury has been off work for three months. So exactly what you'd say to a colleague, you're just writing in a more formal way and you keep the order the same. 
Mr. Jones is receiving ongoing physiotherapy sessions, which have proved successful, although he still reports feelings of fatigue, especially after walking for 30 minutes or longer. Don't start talking about where he lives and his parents and his dog and his brother. It might be in the case notes, but if it's not important, if it's not something you would say to a colleague in the handover, don't say it in your letter. Get to the point and then carry on. Just formalise the rest of your notes and make sure you've got all the important details in, but nothing extra. So let's summarise then. How do you select and organise information? First of all, don't just transcribe the case notes. That's not what the letter is asking you to do. It's asking you to summarise. Plan as though you're doing a verbal handover. Make notes on what you would say to your colleague and then formalise the notes. And it's as simple as that. Well, I hope you found that useful. For more information about my pre-recorded courses, which are available on Udemy and which you can study in your own time, take a look at the info box below and I'll put some discount codes in there for you. If you like this video, I'd be so happy if you could help me grow this channel by telling your friends, giving it a like and subscribing. And why not take the chance now to watch a few more of my videos? I've got 150 for you, so I'm sure you'll find something that you would find interesting. Finally, if you want a free newsletter for a regular dose of all things OET, then why not sign up below? Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.